Hi, everyone. My name is Tyler Huffsettler. I'm head of partnerships here for Maintain X. I want to welcome you uh, for joining this webinar to, uh, today. We are very excited to introduce Maintain X and the machine uh, matrix relationship here. Um, as I mentioned, I do lead the partnerships here. I've worked uh, to develop partnerships both as an operator and as a technology provider uh, because operations leaders um, of tomorrow and today will inevitably need uh, multiple technologies, a part of their uh, tech stack inside their facilities. I love the transformations for some of the world's largest commodities companies. And, and at that time, I wish that relationships between uh, two organizations like this existed, uh, at least that those two products even existed at that time. So uh, we're really excited to introduce this relationship today. Uh, we'd like for you to come away with a few items. Uh, we want you to come away with understanding how uh, your company uh, can benefit from, from uh, the integration of our two products, um, moving from reactive maintenance to predictive maintenance and prescriptive maintenance, how to leverage technology to quickly transform your strategies, and then how to monitor the health of your equipment in real time to automatically triggering uh, maintenance activities. So stick with us uh, to the end for an exciting giveaway too. I'd like to go ahead and introduce to you our, our co-hosts here, our, our guests. Uh, here we have uh, Graham Eimerman, uh, who's VP of, uh, of Marketing for Machine Metrics, as well as our subject matter expert and product manager, uh, Colin McClarty. Uh, for our agenda today, uh, we plan to cover um, the, a little bit of background on Maintain X, uh, background on machine metrics, what that connected factory ecosystem looks like, the roadmap to automated maintenance, and then ultimately why our two products together um, Make, make sense. So uh, before we get started, uh, this webinar is going to be recorded. Uh, you will get a follow-up link. Any kind of questions you might have, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'll answer them individually while, while Graham is going or vice versa. No problem at all. Um, anything else, uh, please uh, feel free to, to follow up with us via email. Um, there will be a, um, uh, a link at the end uh, for any kind of follow-up questions and, uh, and other kind of inquiries. Next slide. A little bit about Maintain X. So we um, we are a connected maintenance management system. Uh, we help companies across a variety of industries and around the world um, to leverage technology to automate their workflows. Um, we did exit spring of 22. We're very excited for that, for the highest user adoption. And you can uh, validate that by the throughput on our platform with four, four and a half million work orders done. So not only are users downloading Maintain X and using Maintain X to monitor and, and perform maintenance operations, but they're using it a heck of a lot. Uh, we have currently 2,700 plus active global customers. Those aren't trials or demo accounts. Those are actual logos and customers uh, that we get to, uh, get to use. So next slide here. When we think about our maintenance operations, the reason why I want to share this slide right here is just the diversity of the logos that come to Maintain X. But all of these companies, whether they're in food and bev, or in uh, building materials and aggregates, or in distribution, what they all have in common together is they have heavy equipment, they have assets that are touching cash flow that they have to monitor and perform maintenance on. That's why a relationship with something like Maintain X and Machine Metrics is valuable and critical, because as all of these companies, doesn't matter what industry they're in, have assets, whether it's rotating equipment, um, or static equipment that they need to monitor that they can uh, initiate work orders off and triggers off of uh, um, industrial IoT devices as well as a CMS like MaintainX. Given our position that the human is central to the workforce, it has to be enabled to work more efficiently and quickly across a lot of, of systems, right? So our ecosystem is full of emerging technologies as we see today. Uh, we have taken a very holistic approach to developing this platform that acts as a single pane of glass between industrial workers um, and all the capabilities that are required for, for human and machine uh, hybrid activities um, in transforming their digital ecosystem. So the workers of today and tomorrow require a solution that's able to talk to machines and systems, that's able to work across uh, their organization, across, across functional teams, as well as take this information that they get, uh, the data that, that spends off of their performance in, in history and be able to either perform the analytics inside the platform or be able to pipe that to things like Power BI or Tableau or Spotfire. 
So I'm going to hand it over here um, to, to Graham as we want to learn more too about machine metrics and the, the importance of, of their company and the overlap uh, between our products. Well, thank you, Tyler. Uh, it is great to be here uh, today with MaintainX. Nick, thank you as well. My name is Graham Immerman. I'm the VP of Marketing here at Machine Metrics. It is nice to meet you all, albeit virtually, coming to you live from the blurry void in Northampton, Massachusetts. Uh, so, you know, we're here to talk a bit about, you know, the state of maintenance. Uh, we're here to talk about the state of manufacturing. We're here to talk a bit about partnership between uh, Machine Metrics and MaintainX and how we can help manufacturers uh, quickly uh, make their maintenance efforts uh, uh, more effective and efficient. Uh, but just to start, I put this number on the screen because I feel like it's kind of really at the heart of why we're here, right? Which is, you know, last year, and we can tell you this because machine metrics connected to, you know, hundreds of customers, thousands of machines all over the world. The average utilization rate of discrete manufacturing equipment was less than 30%. I'll let that sink in for a moment. Now, manufacturers today are under an incredible amount of pressure. Got fluctuating demand is driving a need to produce at higher capacity. Skilled worker shortage, which we'll get into a minute, is driving an even greater need for efficiency and employee satisfaction. Heightened competition, driving the need to deliver higher quality products on lower margins. So, Supply chain restructuring has been accelerated by the COVID pandemic as the effects of this weakened chain, which all of us have experienced, have become visible. I don't know about you, but how many times have you ordered something recently and not had it arrive on time? Uh, many companies are looking at restructuring their supply chains, trying to support rising demand, a balance of resilience, efficiency, reduce costs. Many companies believe reshoring is the answer. Uh, this is like the a recent survey from Thomas that showed, uh, you know, up 70 plus percent of manufacturers were either likely or, or at least 83 percent or likely or extremely likely to reshore in the coming years. And the top verticals most adept to doing so would be advanced manufacturing. But with reshoring being a potential solution comes just additional pressure on manufacturers who are already under fire to deliver at record time, continue to cut costs, hire skilled labor, which is difficult, and increase the efficiency of their equipment. Thus, there has never been a more important time to reduce the burden of non-essential manual tasks and decision-making, and it needs to be done really quickly. So to do so, manufacturing today is undergoing a significant transformation from manual or lean systems to connected systems that rely less on human interaction. Most factories have disconnected operations today. Machines are disconnected from the people who operate them and the systems that manage day-to-day -day operations. People, which are obviously essential to keep equipment running, uh, making processes more efficient and, and, and you know, making you know, key business decisions are difficult to find. Um, Feel free to uh, you know shout us out in the chat if you are having trouble finding the right people to do the right job when you need it. Um, there is a significant labor shortage. Deadlines are commonly missed due to these supply chain issues, equipment failures, and other losses. Not having visibility into what's happening oftentimes snowballs into further failures. So manufacturers need production information and, and, and manufacturing information in real time in order to make quick business decisions and to automate more processes to compensate for the lack of workers and stay competitive. Thank you, Ronald. I appreciate you <laughs> admitting what we all feel uh, every day. Uh, now, industrial IoT, uh, you know, the buzzword, if you will, was designed to mitigate some of these, this, these problems by connecting to machines, uh, but getting actionable data is really difficult with the hundreds of different machines, makes, models, controls, connectivity protocols. More often than not, expensive system integration, consulting is required to, to actually make these solutions work. Because this, um, over 60% of these solutions uh, stall at uh, POC stages, 
80% of projects actually fail overall and getting value from taking action on data cannot be done without the right data. And this is where most manufacturers get stuck. So today's manufacturing operation systems, ERP, MES, require significant manual data entry, which is a problem given, as we just described, the industry's growing labor shortage. So the job of frontline workers, the ones that you have, is often tied up entering data. Systems that track manufacturing operations like MES that are designed to provide uh, visibility into production, quality, maintenance, inventory, they need data and they need the right data in real time. And, it, and it's the job of frontline workers to ensure this data is entered timely and accurately. And that's a problem because these workers should be operating and maintaining equipment, improving processes, not manually entering data into software systems. So it's time for manufacturing to change, number one. And two, manufacturing technology must evolve to solve these problems. So enter machine metrics, uh, one of a number of solutions that are you know, solving today's, today's problems in manufacturing. Um, and we're really at the forefront of these transformations. Using machine metrics, instead of frontline workers driving machines and systems, um, we're connecting machine data insights from this data to drive people and other systems. So using machine metrics, decisions can be made in real time, giving frontline workers information that they need when they need it, while connecting this real-time data into other factory systems with no or limited operator input required. So at machine metrics, we're really uh, applying the concept of connected factory to discrete manufacturing. Uh, machine metrics has a couple core components of our platform uh, that's simple enough to be installed by any maintenance tech. Uh, you can see on the right side of the screen, this, this, this green box called we call machine metrics edge is powered by the machine. It's connected to Wi-Fi or, or ethernet or even cellular and communicates with the machine metrics cloud data from these machines, and I mean what's happening physically, how many parts they're making, uh, loads, feeds, speeds, temperatures, rotary velocities, diagnostic PMC parameters, key contextualized data to understanding the health and performance of these machines is captured automatically from the machine control or relays on the machine and, and, and with the additional, uh, additional sensors on the outside of the machine. And I cannot uh, underestimate how difficult this was to make machine connectivity this quick and easy. Last year, 90% of machine metrics customers were able to plug machine metrics platform in on their factory floors without needing anyone to come help them on site. That data is then sent to our our cloud, the data platform, where we overlay operational data like jobs or other shop floor activities. That multi-tenant cloud platform ensures that all of your performance and, 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 and health data of the machine is gathered, processed in one central location to deliver secure, reliable, remote access to anywhere on anybody in your team, anytime. And once that data is there, uh, the system starts analyzing machine performance and health and can automatically generate insights that initiate actions. Our no, no code workflow engine is used to automate workflows uh, around the machine, such as letting the right person know when uh, a, a specific machine alarm uh, is happening on a machine or uh, when a certain load is indicating it's time to change the tool on a machine or when a cycle time is exceeding a certain limit. It's all about letting the right person know what needs to happen when it needs to happen. Now, Machine Metrics provides a number of out-of-the-box use cases that deliver immediate value for our customers. Real-time dashboards that display what's happening in real time, historical reporting, rules-based workflows, uh, text email notifications that deliver optimized processes to your factory workers. Our customers are using uh, these to empower their frontline workers to be able to operate more efficiently by automating these tasks to reduce unplanned downtime. Now, finally, our platform is designed to integrate with other systems, some right out of the box. And I think you guys will get where I'm going with this in just a few minutes here. 
uh, these, these, these integrations, right, provide uh, real-time data for business intelligence, MES, work instructions, and even maintenance systems. This cuts uh, out manual data entry and provides solutions that automate insights from the machine to drive that machine data-driven uh, uh, actions across the factory floor to other frontline workers. So for what it's worth, and this isn't just a humble brag, you know, uh, we've been very successful in the space like uh, MaintainX. Uh, you know, we are highly focused in discrete manufacturing in industries like automotive, aerospace, heavy industry, medical device, contract manufacturing. But our customers span from small contract manufacturers to some of the largest companies in the world with thousands of different types of machines. These companies are leveraging our solution uh, to, to uh, automating uh, machine data collection, monitoring, analytics to just optimize their shop floor productivity, increase the effectiveness of their maintenance solutions uh, and their equipment utilization and maximize their capacity for production. So, okay, what does this really have to do with maintenance, right? Well, whether it be planned or unplanned, downtime uh, is downtime. And reactive maintenance leads to under maintenance, which is, results in machine breakages or unplanned downtime. If it, if it broke, we gonna fix it, right? Uh, Calendar-based preventative maintenance strategies often lead to over maintenance, which is expensive and requires people, which you probably don't have enough of in the first place. So imagine if you maintain your car on a calendar versus after a certain number of miles or when the engine light goes on, right? Why should the same paradigm not apply to our machines? Well, it, it should, and it does. Uh, so today, most CMMS systems are unable to, they, they, they can achieve remarkable value in moving people, just to be clear, from reactive maintenance to calendar-based maintenance systems. However, to achieve the next level of value that can be driven through, uh, through a maintenance system, the machines tell us when it is time to do maintenance. So we need to empower our maintenance systems with real-time data from our manufacturing equipment. So with machine metrics uh, and MaintainX working together, uh, manufacturers can not just go from a reactive or calendar-based uh, maintenance schedule to one that's driven by usage of the machine or a condition of the exceed or even predictive maintenance, predicting certain elements that can cause a downtime before it even occurs, or in a perfect world, a machine that maintains itself. Uh, and that's kind of like the end goal for all of us, right? Is that machines never go down. They fix their own problems and keep running, order their own parts. But we've got a ways to go. And there's remarkable value that can be delivered uh, along the way. Most factories today react to unplanned downtime when it happens and use CMMS systems to track the work required to fix assets. And with history and planning, preventative maintenance can be scheduled to hopefully prevent breakdowns from occurring on, you know, based on that past data. But most CMS, uh, CMMS tools uh, can be used to schedule maintenance well ahead of failure, which does eliminate many unplanned breakdowns. Uh, but for those of us that operate within discrete manufacturing, uh, your assets aren't just constantly processing material, right? For example, um, they may run less consistently and change over frequently, and thus a usage-based preventative maintenance schedule uh, can uh, drive activities based on the actual usage of the asset. Just like we change our oil on a car every 10,000 miles. It requires updating meter values frequently, which is often the job of the machine operator, uh, but using machine metrics, for example, all that usage can be, you know, collected right out of the machine. Uh, so we can tell you exactly how long, you know, that machine has been running uh, and in cut, for example. This can be highly effective to trigger maintenance tickets, um, an optimized program based on ideal maintenance schedules based on usage. Taking, you know, your program to the next level, condition-based maintenance relies on machine events and conditions, telling operators and maintenance conditions that a problem is occurring and needs to be solved. Now, as I mentioned before, capturing these events is quite difficult. We spent millions of dollars building out a solution that could actually pull this data from the machine so you could actually know when these pain points were occurring. It's not as good as 
just slapping a sensor on the outside of the machine. Uh, you know, I liken that that strategy, for example, to like going to the doctor uh, and, and you know saying, "Hey, doc, I think I'm really sick," and he puts you know he or she puts these you know their fingers on your pulse, and they're like, "Nah, you're good." And like, well, I wasn't asking you if I'm alive or dead. I'm asking you like do I have a problem, right? So a blood test is what is needed to really understand the conditions of the machine and machine metrics can pull out that data from the control uh, or from additional sensors if necessary, right? To, pr to provide uh, that critical contextualized data necessary to drive a condition-based maintenance program. Some operators today can even hear when machines are failing. That tribal knowledge is difficult to pass on to new operators. If you can hear it, it can be measured. Those, 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 those audible frequencies, right, can be measured in the data from the machine. And if they can be measured, uh, workflows can be configured to offer, to alert operators or trigger, trigger external systems like a maintenance tool uh, to tell people what they need to do when they need to do it, or even potentially a work instruction that tells them exactly how to do it. All that data is accessible via our, 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 our time series APIs or through out of the box uh, integrations with tools like maintenance. Finally, on the maintenance journey, you don't just want to, you know, uh, there, there, there's maintenance events that, that occur that are based on either a series of patterns or anomalies, right, that lead to potential failure. And deep domain expertise is required to capture the right data with the right context, to train the right algorithms uh, uh, for an effective predictive maintenance program. I will spare you all my spiel on the myth of predictive maintenance. And instead, I will just focus in on facts, which are that like to predict a failure on a John Deere tractor in the middle of the field or a moving airplane or a baggage claim and a discrete CNC machine with thousands of different sensors on the inside requires different data and different expertise. This is why most manufacturers get stuck when it comes to predicting problems. Now, by capturing data from these assets at the right frequencies, uh, machine metrics, for example, can actually detect certain patterns in that data that predict problems that occur in these machines, like tool failures, or that lead to potential defects. And these algorithms can be deployed to the edge to even stop machines before those problems occur. So, but we're all on a roadmap here, right? And so what I'm gonna do now is hand this over to Tyler and he's going to talk about what this all means in action. That's right. So look, Graham did a great job highlighting asset performance, asset monitoring and maintenance. Machine Metrics is clearly doing a great job and, and they're trailblazing the, the path here in industrial IoT. MaintainX is providing a best in class performance for maintenance management. And we've all seen installed rollouts here of, of legacy systems in the past, right? Um, and, and rollouts that are taking years and years for, uh, for deployments. Um, so one, one of the things that we wanna highlight in these next few slides here is the ease of use, the ease of deployment, then low code, no, it's not a low code, it's no code deployment. You do not have to have industry expertise. You do not have to ha have IT involved in order to deploy these two solutions because we already fit together. We are already packaged. The package solution can achieve unmatched fast, time to value. Um, and so this is what we'll be discussing here over the next couple of slides. So when we think about the response times and improving machine health, really what we're, what we're saying is, look, how can we help monitor the maintenance that surrounds this equipment, right? How can we help monitor and reduce the costs that are going to be associated with this asset performance? And so what we really need to do is be able to monitor and track where that asset is, how it's performing, is it up? Is it down? Is it detecting anomalous performance? And then tell the operator the so what. The operator goes on site uh, with MaintainX in its hand, initiated off of a workflow that's that's come off of machine metrics, and the operator is able to execute uh, in accordance with OEM standards and procedures uh, according to those codes. Next slide for me. And so let's let's drill, drill in here to the benefits of, of integrating these two. Um, for, our, for us, as I mentioned before, is the ease of use, right? We want to, we realize that operators today don't have the time, the resources, or the personnel 
uh, to invest in multi-year, multi-month rollouts for, for a system that is um, either on-premise or it's a legacy system that's already been installed or it's bought at another location. What we offer is a no-code solution to where our uh, deployments are incredibly, incredibly fast. And, and I'll let Machine Metrics talk about some of their deployments and how fast they go here. But for, for Maintain X, what we offer is a product-led growth. And that means that you can download Maintain X today in the span of this conversation so far, never have engaged a salesperson, never have swiped a credit card, never have issued anything to your purchase team or to your uh, supply chain. And you could already be up and going, right? So we can move really, 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 really fast and be able to help drive value uh, for maintenance teams across any location. Next slide. Finally, when we, th when we think about machine data, right? When we want to know um, not just if it's an asset up, is it down? But what happened in between, right? We want to get the we want to get the insights to what is commonly known as dark data. We need to know not only when it was up, when it was down, but what was happening in between. What were those uh, alarms that went off? What was the maintenance that was performed against it? Who did it? What were the parts used? Uh, was it done within the warranty? Was it done within the OEM standard? And we can track all of this inside of Maintain X. If you could write a Facebook post. You can use these two solutions. That's how easy that we, we want to demonstrate to you. And look, we, we've, we've talked and we've hit this really, really hard so far on the ease of use and the and deployment. And, and I just, I really like, if you're not getting it, that is exactly what we want you to take away is this is so easy to deploy and the value is so tremendous. Let's jump into that. Colin? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Tyler. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be giving a bit of a demo of what we're actually talking about today. We talked a lot about, um, you know, MaintainX, machine metrics, systems that are connected. But um, I'm one of the, the PMs here, product managers at Machine Metrics, Colin McClarty, and I'm going to be walking us through the integration as it exists today, which you'd actually be getting access to when you want to tie our systems together. Um, so, first off, what you can see here, is one of the main drivers of the system in machine metrics workflows. Um, so in machine metrics, you're able to go in and set up these workflows, which are basically automated actions with triggers and then actions. So you want to trigger something in maintain X when an operator asks for help, or maybe they say, hey, the machine is down and needs maintenance. You want to alert maintenance, or when an alarm goes off or a specific category of alarm goes off, you want to automatically send a request to maintenance. These are all configurable by you using machine metrics workflows set up really easy to get going and under your control. You can change what alarms you want to trigger. You can set up new ones really easily. It just takes a couple seconds. Um, and then you're driving automation incredibly quickly. There isn't this kind of talk about simplicity. There's no big need to set up and take a long time. You'll be up and going in, in, in no time. First to it, once the integration is set up, you don't have to, there's absolutely no code involved. Um, so yeah, next slide would be great. Um, and um, these get pushed into MaintainX. If you're a already a machine metrics user, or maybe you're already familiar more with MaintainX, um, MaintainX can handle the more um, detailed ticketing basically of these, uh, of these maintenance requests, right? Machine metrics, we don't have an inbuilt system for tracking maintenance, but we can trigger these maintenance requests and they give you access to a best in class maintenance system where you can track that your maintenance can interact with these issues and communicate to the shop floor, right? Kind of combining the best of these both worlds of real time data and a dedicated maintenance system. Um, hey, hey, Colin, let me just ask you something real fast for, for, yeah. for the audience here is, let's say you're already either a MaintainX um, uh, user or machine metrics user. How fast does it take to perform this? We all hear about system integration, we all hear about, you know, hiring third parties or in-house, mm -hmm. you know, solution architects. Um, how, how fast does this go? Yeah, great question. So this goes basically as fast as you want it to, where we can spin it up in a day, in, in an hour, whatever the lead time is here. And pretty soon we're actually working to making uh, MaintainX our first completely automated integration. So there will be zero interaction, just like with MaintainX, where you can get MaintainX. Um, without speaking to someone, right? You just go say, sign me up, I wanna try this. You'll be able to do the same thing with the integration. So you just go in, you're already a machine metrics user and you say, well, 
I want to know more about this. You know, let me try it out. You can try the integration. Let's be able to sign up for it. Assuming you have a MaintainX account. Um, so incredibly easy. There's, you're definitely not going to work with anyone who's going to say, I, you know, I'm a system integrator. Let me help you integrate this. No need to do that. Um, like I said, we say it's out of the box. It is the package integration. It's already been built. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, all right. So next slide. And I think I'm ready to actually jump into uh, the demo now. Yeah. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay. Now, can you all see my, my screen? We'll check this. Perfect. Thanks, Graham. Um, all right. So now we're looking at machine metrics. I've also got a MaintainX tab over here. So we have kind of our machine metrics MaintainX account, and then we have our machine metrics, machine metrics dashboard here. And um, what we can do here is um, take a look at um, kind of all the assets at a given location. So each of these, I'll give kind of a, a rundown. If you're not familiar with machine metrics, let me try and give you some, some grounding here. So you know what you're looking at. Um, which is each of these rows, right, represents an asset. In this case, you know, CNC lathe number two, CNC lathe, stamping press, um, and also the current status. So CNC lathe number two here has been idle for one hour and 40 minutes while it's working on the operation, you know, widget op 20. So far, the current shift, it has a utilization rate of 21.1%. This is all data collected just directly from the machine control. And it's all connected um, through um, our edge device, which you saw a little picture of. And this edge device, I'm actually I've got one right here. Hopefully that comes through pretty well. Just a little green box, right, that you could um, install locally, which can connect to your machines over your local network, or it can operate as a virtual machine. So if you rather have your IT just manage it, you can, no hardware required, right? You just download it. You've got some IT who can spin up a, a virtual machine. Um, so you have your choice of how you kind of get us connected. Um, and now that we're streaming data from these assets, um, we're able to, like I said, get into this kind of automation flow. So I'll show you those automations, a little picture a um, minute ago, but let's jump into my workflows. These are the ones I currently have set up. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, real fast, Colin, um, how do you automate these workflows that, that you're alluding to and talking about right here? Is this something that, um, that machine metrics sits with the operator and helps them develop that? Is this uh, training that's included? What does that typically look like? Yeah, absolutely. So first off, machine metrics, we do have a bunch of academy lessons and tutorials you get just by signing up with us um, and also potentially working with one of our customer success managers. But it's really straightforward. I don't think you need it. And I'll, I'll show you right now. So let's jump into one of these that I've already created um, and we can take a look. So let's look at one uh, called manual. So you can see it right here. It's a manual trigger for a maintain X low priority. So I'm gonna click on that, go into the details here. You can see there's just a name here, whatever I want to call it. I the available triggers. So in this case, I just said operator triggers manually, meaning I want my operator to be able to press a button to trigger whatever I want triggered here, right? I'm gonna give the operator control. Um, we know there's a lot of, um, we're talking about automation, but like I said, right now operators might be able to hear a sound and know something's gonna be going on and there's not an alarm going off on the machine. So why not let the operator send for help when they need it or before the machine actually stops being productive? Um, and then the trigger is, this is basically sending it just right to the integration. Um, so what's this triggering? We have webhooks, the ability to send data outside of machine metrics based on triggers. So um, there's lots, really unlimited options when you're, when you're talking about sending data from an automated platform like ours. You can integrate all kinds of things. And I think the, the APIs came up. Yeah, MaintainX has great APIs. So we're able to tie right into MaintainX and create this integration. Um, and if you wanted, you could create more actions here beyond just that. So maybe I want to create a, you know, something in uh, MaintainX, but I also wanted a text message whenever, uh, whenever this happened. I could create a notification and, and send it to myself. So I got a text message whenever this, uh, whenever an operator asked for help in this way. Now let's go ahead and I can even take a look at some of these other workflows to give everyone an idea. Um, machine metrics, when you, um, when you have a downtime, the machine is idle. Um, let me jump over, for example, this is a, a close look at the CNC lathe. Uh, number two here, this is what an operator would see. We have tablets or you can just view it on your, um, on your desktop here. Um, 
you get a nice view of just the machine and what's going on with it. And you can see up here, um, it's currently idle. And so we give the operator the chance to categorize the downtime, say, why is this machine idle, right? Again, maybe there isn't a clear alarm, the machine should be active. For example, what, what machine is gonna know when there's no work to be done, right? How do you, how does the machine know that? Well, the operator knows that and they can categorize the downtime as you know, no work. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say machine crash because we're talking about maintenance. Um, we're gonna see in just a minute how this ties in. Um, let's say, I don't know, the machine is on fire. That'd be pretty bad. I'll go ahead and submit that. And you can see machine crash has been going on, downtime categorized successfully. Now we know why this machine is no longer running. Not only that, there's a little, you can see that even the little flag happened right away over here on my maintain X tab. I go over here to requests. That integration just triggered and created a new work request in maintain X for this machine crash, right? So now I could choose to prove the request. Let's go ahead and do that. And See, yep, now it is added to my work orders, right? So just like that, the integration was triggered just off a simple action from an operator, or it can also be triggered based on more automated data, right? So let's take a look at um, sort of a, a situation that can play out. I'm gonna look at a machine's timeline. We collect you know, data, we're, we're showing real-time data right here. But machine metrics, we collect all this data and give it to you to access historically too. So let's take a look at the history of this machine from this morning. I'm gonna open up the timeline here. And while that's opening up, I, I think the, those triggers that you're highlighting there are, are really, really valuable because uh, let's be honest, maintenance managers and, and operations leaders aren't sitting behind a desk waiting to, to monitor or they're not staring at the machine all day, right? So they're on the go, mm -hmm. they're working off a mobile device, they're working you know, off a tablet and they need to be able to get that notification right away and distribute that work request appropriately. So I think that don't underestimate the value of the triggers and being, uh, being able to send those work requests uh, you know, between these two platforms. Yeah, exactly. I think one of the most common things anyone who talks to, well, there are a lot of people, manufacturers in general, is they don't have time for, the, for, for sitting around and doing nothing, right? There's lots of things to do. There's personnel shortages. You can't just be sitting there and you know, do I have time to use all this data you're collecting? Well, you don't have to sit there and analyze all the data. Just set up a workflow, takes a, few, takes a minute. Now the data comes to you, right? It gets surfaced. The whole idea is to save you time, not give you a new project to do of, of sitting and analyzing all the data, right? Leave that to the data scientists. Um, this helps surface those issues. So let's take a look at this machine's history. So I'm looking at the timeline, just as a little explanation here, blue times are idle, green times mean the machine is active. You can see what programs the machine is running. And we can also see what alarms were thrown during the machine as well as cycle times. So a whole bunch of data here. And we can even see somewhat of a, a little bit of a story here. Right. So with this, this machine, there was a tool issue, a tool changer issue that happened pretty earlier uh, after the machine started in the morning. You'd see this is probably when it was turned on and machine ran, the alarm was cleared. Machine ran, went idle again, arm was cleared again. I think everyone who's, you know, in a manufacturing shop knows that when an operator needs to just clear an alarm and get back to work, they will do so. They will clear the alarm, get back to running that machine because their job is to make parts. Um, but this can That's lead right. to not just, being able to make parts. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that, just think about the time delay that they have. They have a quota. We got to get it done. Got to get it done. Got to get it done. Speed is the name of the game. And when they just bypass it every single time, what happens? Shows that. Yeah. It's and you can see what happens, right? Is it leads to a larger failure. Um, and if I click on this, you can see it's machine crash, right? And you can see this play out across, I don't know, hundreds of different types of alarms. Someone refusing to change coolant, gantry issues. There's so many different ways for an error to um, not immediately prevent a machine from running, but ignoring that alarm fault will lead to a larger failure that is exponentially worse than just addressing it and preventing the issue up front. Um, so if we had the integration, let's say in this, this situation, we could have gotten notified the first time it happened, giving maintenance enough time to prevent this from happening, right? Someone to interact with the operator, um, prevent a catastrophic failure and potentially damage to the machine. Like we're talking not just about downtime, there's lots of other considerations. 
Um, and then you're also bringing your maintenance team and using up more time. Now, Colin, just a quick note here. So what you're saying is that you can essentially, um, you can dive into the, you know, this time series data, right? Real time, you know, and, and historical condition information, uh, be able to root cause analyze, you know, the reasons why machines have had failures in the past and then use those reasons, right? Those data items as your triggers for workflows. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. And let's go ahead and kind of play out one of these scenarios now. So I'm gonna actually jump back to my workflows here. So there's a very specific workflow. So we talked about, you know, there's an operator categorizing downtime, an operator asking for help. But let's actually just use just the machine data to do this, right? Obviously, we want to increase communication with operators. That's you need communication across your factory floor and their input, but we also want to automate and save them as much time as possible. So let's look at this one that I have set up here, this workflow. Um, so tool failure, right? And I've set this to a specific alarm. When alarm code is equal to EX1086, this could also be starts with or contains. So you could put this as like a category of alarms. If there's a prefix or a suffix, you know every single time that alarm is going to trigger, you want to know, well, you can do that here and kind of instead of having to pick out every single alarm by itself. Or maybe you just want there's one specific alarm that you've been really struggling with lately that's eating into your productivity, pick out that alarm, right? Get notified, bring it to the surface. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at our machines list here, jump back to our view. Um, and you can see right here, we just got a new alarm coming through on our CNC lathe number two, tool failure. Um, and just like that, I see another request in MaintainX. And so just like that, that alarm occurred seconds later, we are now able to go and take a look at that request that was generated in MaintainX. So tool failure right there, right? No one needed to input that once it's set up. You're automatically bringing these alarms to the attention of your maintenance team. And now your maintenance team can also go back into machine metrics to see what happened. How long has this been going on, right? Has this alarm been occurring multiple times? Um, and this is how you can kind of save everyone time, right? Now you're now preventing these issues from escalating beyond what they should be. And um, without anyone having to go through and tediously like enter data. Or, or alert people, or be sitting there staring at a screen waiting for this alarm to occur, right? I have other things to do. And, and speaking of other things to do, I know something everyone loves to do is, is meter their machines, right? Go to each machine and record how many cycles have happened and, and how long they think it's been active for since the last time they metered it and recorded those numbers. Um, I don't think there are many places that feel like they have incredibly accurate by hand metering. Um, it's certainly a challenge. Um, and so we also take care of that for you as well with this integration, right? Uh, MaintainX um, has meters, right? Assigned to your assets in MaintainX. Um, and these meters can also create workflows automatically. So what we do is we update assets in MaintainX automatically with the number of cycles and the in-hour time, uh, in-cycle time by hour for each asset. So now you just say, well, I want maintenance to create a work order and you know go and perform maintenance on this machine every you know 30 or 40 in cycle hours. You can do that easily. And machine metrics is providing the exact number of hours that the machine has actually been in cycle for. You're not guessing. Same with cycles, right? How many parts has this machine made? No need to guess. And maintain um, and maintenance can be precise about when they go out. No over, no under, you know how many parts has been made since the last time you performed maintenance. Um, and with MaintainX, that's automatically entered into your into the same you know, system as all this other maintenance and all these other flows. It's also a single kind of place for maintenance to perform their job. They don't have to be jumping between a bunch of different systems. It's all brought into a place where they can um, they can work in a single place without a bunch of you know 20 different tabs open jumping between systems um, or using old systems that are hard to use. Um, yeah, and and I think. And just to, I'll, I'll touch on that one last point with the metering. All it takes to set the metering is a single workflow. It's one workflow scheduled at 4 p.m. every day, and it triggers, and then you're set. Um, that's really all there's to it. I think there's uh, a lot of the beauty of this integration is it's easy and it's fast, and because it's through workflows, you have a lot of control over how it works. Um, so there's no need to come to us and be like, "Hey, can you make this one check?" I want my meters to update, you know, twice a day, or, or I'd rather have them happen at this time or, you know, something like that. You can just go in and you have control over it in a, 
in a no code way. So we're really trying to put the power into, into users hands with this one. Um, and I think that just about does it for kind of, I, I'd love to talk more about machine metrics, but we only have so much time and I don't want to get too far away from our topic here today. So I think I'll, I'll hand it back to Tyler. Awesome. Thanks, Colin. Look, I, I think that that was really powerful and a, and a great demonstration of what our two solutions uh, can do together. There's there's clearly a lot of use cases, it's gotten a lot of personal questions in here too via chat. So thank you very much for providing those. Um, and if I haven't been able to respond directly to uh, some of the PMs, uh, please please let me know and we can, I'm gonna drop my email and, uh, and LinkedIn here inside the chat so we can see it. Um, look, today, what we wanted to discuss is how you can leverage technology, most more specific, how you can leverage MaintainX and industrial IoT, like machine metrics, these two great solutions that are that are out there uh, with, with huge amounts of adoption right now in the marketplace. How can you use this off-the-shelf technology um, to deploy, how you can uh, get fast time to value, how you can start moving from reactive maintenance and get into predictive and prescriptive maintenance, how you leverage these technologies to move quickly across locations, geographies. That's one thing that um, I didn't unpack too much during this. Uh, but look, one of the things that we're always hearing from customers is we need tools that help us become force multipliers. Uh, meaning, how can we do the job of 10 people with six? How can we do that job with seven people? So when you can bring these two solutions to the table together that are out of the box, off the shelf, these are not custom build, these are not multi-year, multi-month rollouts. And these are very, very, very fast time to value, already relationships built between the products. Um, then you can achieve that value that you're looking for, where you can monitor the health of equipment and then you can initiate workflows that come off of it. These are the things that we really hope uh, that, that you could learn from today, um, get a quick appetite for what that is. And then um, as, as promised, um, I do, I will drop a, um, a registration link uh, down here inside the chat. Uh, so that way, if you, if you wanna unpack and get a, a deeper dive demo and discuss what that looks like with our team, um, you know, we, we um, have an Amazon give, um, gift cards uh, to give to each person that, that wants to sign up and go through that. So uh, we are really, really excited about where this opportunity can go, where it can take us, and more importantly, the value that our operators can gain from this pre-established and pre-built relationship. So as we were looking to organize something um, like this today, we thought, well, we're going to reach out to all of MaintainX customers. And we're going to reach out to all of Machine Metrics customers and see, hey, look, there's there's clearly overlap between our products. There's overlap overlap between our customers. Let's share the good news uh, collectively to them. There's clearly some folks in here that may not be a customer of either one, and that's okay. So um, as you register or something on here, we'll take it as it comes, and we'll figure out what the best course of action looks like. Right? How do we help? get you to the right place uh, in order to get that value that you're, that you're needing for your operations. Um, I, uh, I will follow up uh, with, uh, with Graham and Colin right here. Any, any parting words for us? Well, uh, you know, I just want to thank Tyler, you know, Nick again for, for hosting us. Uh, you know, you know, I think we're in an age where the manufacturing ecosystem of solutions is evolving very quickly and this new school of thought emerging really led by you know visionary software companies like maintain acts like machine metrics with you know this one shared goal which is to make it easy for manufacturers to uh to achieve uh this once in a generation opportunity that exists today um in the reorganization of manufacturing so, um, you know, uh, I'm very excited uh, to support their organization for us to be aligned and even more so, I think, to, uh, to make it easy for the customers themselves to just experience these benefits. Because the reality, I think, is that, you know, more often than not, the biggest challenge that I see with manufacturers in this space is getting rapid value to prove that the value exists, not just to know it, but to actually experience it and prove it. And that's something that our two solutions can do very quickly. So, um, you know, I think it was great. And uh, we look forward to helping many of you along your journey. Awesome. Thanks, Graham.
like 